Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, it's such a good day. The Lord was so good this morning, wasn't he? He's going to be so good tonight. Let's start this service by welcoming him in the house. Just see what he's going to do. Thank you, Jesus. I give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night For you, oh Lord, have made me glad I will sing for joy at the works of your hand And rejoice in what you have done I give thanks to you, Lord And sing praise to your name, oh Most High I'll declare, I'll declare Your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night For you, oh Lord, Lord, you, oh Lord have made you me, made me glad. glad I will sing for joy at the works of your hand And rejoice in what you have done And rejoice, and rejoice in what you have done Oh Lord, how great are your works How great are your works Lord, for I know that you're on my side. 
God, I can rest. I won't be defeated. For you are the strength of my life. For you, oh Lord, have made me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hand. And rejoice. Let's rejoice. God is so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know you didn't hear this morning. We, we had Sunday school class, and I know you guys had a good time out here. But we learned that God is Lord over all confusion. And when I'm confused, I run to Jesus. And I think you, some of you discovered that this morning in practice. When you came to the Lord and you started worshiping, everything simplified. And all of a sudden, you found answers to situations you had no idea could have had answers to. And it just happened in a moment. And so tonight, let's carry that on. If you're confused, if you've got something going on in your life, if there's situations in your life that are out of your control, we're here tonight to praise the Lord. When you come and you bring your needs to the Lord, you are worshiping the Lord. You are running to the Lord. And God is going to move, and He's going to simplify things for you, and He's going to bring answers to you tonight. Do you believe that? If you have a need, you can come to the front. They will anoint you with oil. Let's pray together. Let's, let's believe together. Let's, let's go to the Lord together with our needs. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, God, you are not the author of confusion. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we worship you tonight. We come to the God who is above it all, who's through it all, who's in us all. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we, we reach out to you tonight, God, that you would move in our situations, in all of our convoluted situations, God, in all of our problems that we can't bring apart, God, that we can't find solutions to. 
Lord, in sicknesses, God, and in problems of the body, Lord, doctors can't figure out what's wrong. Doctors don't know how to fix it, God. We know a God who is over it all. And Lord, we're believing tonight. God, we come together in single-mindedness, Lord, to worship you, Lord, not to dwell on our problems, not to dwell on our situations, not to be in bondage to those things, God, but to cast our cares on the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Lord, we bring every need to you tonight, and we cast them at your feet, and we bring glory to you, God. We have come to worship you, Lord, the God triumphant, the God victorious, the God who's our healer. In Jesus' name, worship the Lord together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We give you glory tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our situations, God. We thank you, Lord, for how you're moving in this service tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. How great.
give the Lord some praise. He's done a wonderful work already. Praise God. We give you thanks and we give you praise, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I thank you for what you've done and what you're doing right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The Lord's always welcome to do whatever he wants to do. Praise God. Praise God. Why don't you tell somebody before you're seated better watch out you never know what the Lord's gonna do praise God amen amen <laughs> they used to think that the preacher had it in his hanky and when he'd shake his hanky at you that's what it was but it was really the Holy Ghost amen God bless you you may be seated the ushers are coming to receive the offering and we welcome all of you here to this second service of our revival. We'll be here tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Looking forward to what the Lord is going to do tonight and the remainder of this revival. Amen. Also, we want to remind you, next Sunday is All Nations Sunday. Looking forward to a great day uh, at 10 o'clock in our All Nations Sunday service. Missionary uh, Rodriguez will be with us, missionary from uh, uh, Portugal, <laughs> Portugal, I was like, come on, come on, come on, where is it, where is it, uh, Portugal is going to be with us, we're going to be going back to the fellowship center after it's over with, after the service is complete, we have 20, about 20 uh, nas nations represented, we're going to have all sorts of good food and fellowship and just celebrating that the Lord is pouring out His Spirit on all nations. And the Lord has brought them to North America and we're able to minister to them. And so uh, it's just a very special day next next Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. So please keep that in mind. Amen. God bless you. And uh, anybody feel the presence of the Lord here? Amen. I know the Lord is in this place. Praise God. Continue to worship with the praise team as they lead us into the presence before we hear some preaching. God bless you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Isn't he so good? Let's just continue in this atmosphere of worship. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood crimson Price of life's demand Shameful sin Placed on him The hope of every man 
Praise God. Aren't you thankful there's victory in the name of Jesus? Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. It's in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. What a wonderful service we had this morning. And the Lord just seemed to take over and the Lord renewed some folks in the Holy Ghost and touched a lot of people around this altar. And we don't apologize for any of that. We're excited about that. I'm thankful for what the Lord has already done. He touched Jerry right up here at this altar already. Praise God. <laughs> That's the result of a lot of prayers of that lady sitting right next to you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Don't ever stop praying for your family. Don't ever stop praying for your friends, for your loved ones. Praise God. God hears those prayers. Amen. We're so happy to have Brother Albritton with us. And for some of you who haven't been here, you know, for 20 years, but he's been coming to this church preaching for more than 20 years, I think, we finally determined. And uh, he was an, a full-time evangelist many, many years ago, and he'd come by and preach. Then he started pastoring church in Colorado, and we'd still invite him to come back and preach. And now he's evangelizing again full-time, and so now we're inviting him back again. He may become something else, but we'll still invite him to come back and preach. We're happy to have him with us. Why don't you welcome him to this pulpit, Brother Albritton. God bless you. We love you. Happy you're here in Jesus' name. Oh, let's just give our Jesus an ovation of praise. He's being so good to us. God, you're so good. We love you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. You're so good. Hallelujah. Just a standing ovation as if he really physically just walked in the room because he has walked in this room. We give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you folks. Well, I wanted to preface it with my, my, my. So I'm going to say that. My, my, my. It feels good in the house of God all day long. Amen. I hope y'all realize there's something flowing in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, my, my, my. Come on. You can do it. Amen. I realized this morning. It was just beautiful when pastor or whoever was leading the service offered up, maybe the gentleman that was leading the worship, but offered for folks to be able to come forward to be prayed for if, if you just had sickness or a need. And I remember after a moment or two, I'm like, whoa, he's here. And they're wide open. Something's already flowing. And then that second worship set after the announcements and the offering and all of that, and then they were singing, something has to break, and I'm like, it's, it's already broke. And, uh, and then people began to come up front, and i tell you what I've seen this morning and tonight, because when you're in ministry this long, you see it on people's faces. We get the privilege of sitting up here, and I can just glance, see someone coming to the altar. You don't just see it. Your heart feels it. People have come to this altar with a passion and a tenderness and a hunger all day long. This brother just touched my heart so deeply. When he was walking to that altar, I'm like, he's coming for something. I see that just on his face. And young lady this morning just touched my heart, just crying out to God. God, God sees that. He hears that. And at the end of the service this morning, it just kind of settled on me and uh, may have to turn into a message or a sermon somewhere here, but but it, it, it just hit me. And Malachi, the Lord was telling his people, said, prove me and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven. And I was like, wow, it feels like the windows of heaven were open this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then during the time of the flood, it said the fountains of the deep opened up. So I had this mental picture this morning of the heavens opened up and something pouring out and something from the depth of God's people opened up. Amen. It was coming down from heaven and flowing up from within. Amen. That's what it feels like is happening in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And so 
we are so grateful. It's so good to be back in Dewar, Oklahoma, America. Amen. I'll tell you what greets me back to Oklahoma almost every time when I'm in this part of the country. I guess it's any of y'all ever have, it's just a consistent check to make sure you, you're prayed through. Make sure you got there something that's a, a, a thermometer or it's a patient's test or it's a something and every once in a while circling back around. For me, when I'm preaching Oklahoma, is paying tolls at the Indian Nation Turnpike when you forgot to bring cash. That's happened to me. Like, I, you'd think I'd learn by now. I just don't come but every few years through this part of the country and it, it gets me every time. So the sweet lady at that booth last night, I stopped and visited friends and several of ministry friends were together in Hugo, visited with them and they cooked out. Man, we had a wonderful time. And then here I am coming up this way and get to that first toll booth and I'm like a few miles away and I'm like, oh Lord, I forgot cash. And I'm like, well, surely forgive me, but for surely y'all at least in like the 2000s now and, and it'll take a picture of my license plate and we'll be good. And when I got up there, I'm like, I don't see none of those options, tag or cash. So I pull over in that little booth, and I'm like, ma'am, I don't, I don't have a drop of cash on me. I might could dig and find a couple quarters or dimes. And she said, all right. She said, I'll have to write you this deal. She said, you're going to owe this toll, but you got to get off right here. And she said about, it was at Antlers, I think. She said, right down there. I even recognize the deer in that little store because it's a big old monster 10 point because I've had to stop there before and get cash. She said, if you go right down there, you can get cash. And she said, then when you get back on, you can pay me and you'll owe me. And she told me how much that I would owe her. So I go and I'm getting cash. And so when I asked the guy at the little store, do y'all have an ATM? He said, yeah, but they stick it to you. It's $4.50 charge. I said, oh, Lord, y'all get me over there. You're getting me over here. And, and so then I get my cash. I get back. And when I go to pay her, I realize, y'all, I said, I know it ain't you. I said, ma'am, I got a smile on you, my face. I am not taking it out on you. She said, believe me, they do. People do. And I said, well, I'm not going to be one of those. I said, but but you, y'all you making me pay for the first time I came through and I got off right here. And you know it. And, and you making me pay twice? She said, so y'all got me like three different ways. But I stayed prayed through, so all is well. A moral of the story. Bring cash. She said, if you come back next year, it'll take a picture of your license plate. So Oklahoma's having revival, man. That's, that's good stuff, man. Good stuff. And then I know for all you spiritual people, y'all been in the Holy Ghost for an hour, but all morning and tonight, I'm wondering, are those neon paints mixed with that navy? Are they ever going to mix? Or are they just going to keep doing that all night long? See, y'all didn't know. That's not a graphic. That's inside of a paint can to have a little light, and it's neon pink. Anyway, that's where my brain went. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is so good. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I believe God has something for you tonight. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I believe God has something for you tonight. Some of y'all can't even think spiritual. Now you're trying to figure out if the paint's ever going to mix. It's all right to smile in the house of the Lord. I repeat myself on this, but it's very intentional. The reason I can say to you, I don't have to know you, or I can have you say to your neighbor, I believe God has something for you tonight, because I believe every single time that we come to church, if we have a mind and a heart for something from God, he's going to have something, maybe a nugget, maybe a whole steak, may, but he's going to have a word. He's going to have something from his spirit that's going to be for us. Amen. So it's a tremendous honor to be with Brother and Sister Martin, to be with you all. We have been, been able to be a part of, of your church for a long time, and for that we are truly, truly grateful. I would ask this week, just as you're praying for the revival, just throw some prayers back home to my uh, beautiful children, my 18-year-old Emery in her second year of college, my 17-year-old Eden, who's a senior in Abeka Homeschool. It's online, so I don't have to do a whole lot of homeschool teaching. 
Amen. Thank God for that online. And then my boy Creed is in the uh, third grade. And on Friday, I uh, was privileged to go to his honor roll celebration. And he made A.B. honor roll just doing great, doing good in school. But while I'm here, single parent dad, they're there. And they take care of life pretty good when dad has to buzz out for a couple of days. But I covet your prayers. And I thank you for covering my family and children in the name of the Lord. Let's turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 55. I was starting to wonder if y'all had messed up in inviting evangelists, man. Y'all had so much Jesus flowing. I'm just kidding. God's got it all orchestrated. He's got it all orchestrated. Every service can't be all preaching. Every service can't be all, all singing. Every revival is not going to be all preaching. To me, one of the most beautiful things is like what happened this morning. Because it's God's sign, I'm doing something. So I believe God has something for us. Psalms 55, verse 4 through 8. The psalmist, you would think he was writing from 2022. Because he loaded a lot of issues in two verses. These first two verses, he said, my heart is sore pained within me. My heart hurts. The terrors of death are falling upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. Horror hath overwhelmed me. He didn't use the words like oppression anxiety, but he did for that day. Fearfulness, trembling come upon me and horror, that's a strong word, have overwhelmed me. And he was very poetic in his next statement. And he said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. He just spent two verses telling me it's rough right now. I wish I had wings like a dove. For if I did, I tell you what I'd do, I'd fly away. I might finally get some rest. Tell me, nobody has to raise your hand, nobody has to say amen if you felt this way recently. But he just goes on and just tells you how he's feeling. He said, if I had wings, I'd fly away. I'd be at rest. Look what he says next. I would wander far off. If I could just get out of here, it would be better. Where I'm at is not good. I'd wander far off. And you know what I'd do next? I'd stay in the wilderness so I don't have to come back here. He said, you know what else? He said, I would hasten my escape. I ain't going to be slow when I'm getting out of here. I would hasten my escape from this windy storm and this tempest. The psalmist is expressing a strong desire in his challenging life circumstances and the emotions and the feelings and the things that he's facing. And he was just expressing, I just want to be somewhere else. You almost get the idea like, well, exactly where do you want to go? I don't care, just somewhere else. He was implying that where he was at and what he was going through was just too tough, too difficult, too much to handle. I repeat, he said it was pains in my heart terrors of death, afraid, trembling, storm, horror. He said, if I could just get away. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Tonight, I want to minister on the subject, wishing for wings. Would you say that with me? Wishing for wings. God bless and you may be seated. Lord, your spirit not just all service, but all day. 
your affirmation has been so strong. I believe the two most powerful forces on this earth, and then when combined, they're just so amazingly beautiful to watch unfold, and, and that is the power of your spirit and the power of your word, the two most powerful forces. God, let both work in this house tonight. Let both work in this revival, your spirit and your word. Let your spirit move. Let your word speak. Let your word speak. Let your spirit act. Let it move in lives and hearts as it already has. We ask for your anointing over me, over this congregation for the next few moments, for your word to have its free course in Jesus' name. When faced with or going through tough times, it is our human nature to want to get away or just be somewhere else. Southwest Airlines ran an, an advertising theme probably for five or ten years. It just became something that you would hear the little slogan or uh, you, 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 it, was, it was something that was very common. And, and they repeated this scenario over and over. Southwest, Air, Southwest Airlines known for pretty pretty affordable airfares already, but they would have a, a scenario, and they did it on television. It was on radios. You could hear them on a bunch of different uh, uh, media presentations, but it would always be some type of setting at work or a family or job, whatever, and then somebody would do something or something would happen, and you knew all of a sudden they were about to be very embarrassed. They were on the spot. Something had just gone very wrong, and it was 100% their fault. And then the, the music would freeze and the narrator would say, ever just want to get away? And then they would say, Southwest Airlines, $59 flights. And, and, and they, they used that theme for several years to promote their inexpensive discounted airfares, ever just want to get away. And I would say that the desire to get away from a tough time or to escape the pressure that pain involves in our life, that things that bring pain, and if I can escape the pain, or if I can escape the pressure, if I can escape the stress, I, I, I believe that that is common. I believe that it is would even be considered understandable. Can't always give in, but it's understandable that it's a common behavior. Holy Ghost moved so beautifully on a phone call yesterday. Someone that trusts me, who death and cancer has entered their family. Terror, it's, it's hard to comprehend how this much could come in one family in a two-year stretch. And it's a young adult person doing all they can to make it for God, and yet they're struggling. And the two words in the long text that I received this past week was autopilot or numb or escapes, finding, I don't want to, but, but things happen that, and I, I get it. There's so much challenge in that person's journey. Holy Ghost moves so beautifully after time of discussion and prayer driving here for revival over this past weekend. We would consider it normal. Even Jesus, God on this earth in human form, experienced these emotions. For in the Garden of Gethsemane, facing the agony of what was to come, the soon to come scourging and crucifixion and all that was involved. Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. This is God manifest in the flesh. This is humanity. Notice what he said. He fell on his face. He prayed. Oh, my father. Would somebody say these next few words with me? If it 
be possible if there's any other way than the situation that I'm in. Now understand, that was heavy. That was the weight of the whole world, the sins of the whole world, and he felt it all alone. No disciple could help him at that moment because it was a place that only, only the lamb slain from the foundation of the world could go. But it wasn't an easy moment even for God manifest in the flesh. It wasn't even just a difficult moment. It was overwhelming. And in that overwhelming moment, even our Jesus said, if it's possible, can I go over, around, under? Can you move? Can, can something happen? where I do not have to be in this moment. Nevertheless, oh, I love this part of the prayer. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt, I trust you. My prayer right now is deliverance. My prayer is that you would remove me or move the circumstance, do something where I do not have to be in this. Nevertheless, if this is something that you're allowing and it's something that you're not going to deliver me from, then not my will, but thine be done. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts and his plans are so much higher than ours. And as Jesus, we too can pray, if possible, get me out of this circumstance. If possible, could you fix it today? You ever imagined? I mean, this is one church in one city in one state in one nation. Can you imagine how many prayers God gets every day? Fix it now. Today. Huh? You ever thought about that? I imagine he's getting thousands because there's a whole lot of human beings on this earth. Say, it hurts. I don't like it. This is a tough spot. If there's any possible way, can you fix it? Heal me, deliver us, change this now. His ways are higher. It's our nature to say if possible. Jesus said that, if it be possible. That's our nature. But I also want to encourage you not to forget the second part of that prayer. Nevertheless, if you don't deliver me today, not my will, but thine be done. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in you. Amen. I'm going to put my life in your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just a moment here. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this. I hope I don't make a few hundred people thirsty all at the same time. When faced with the pain or the stress or the terror, David put a lot in those verses. He was going through something heavy. When faced with that, our, our nature sometimes is to only pray as David prayed. God, get me out of this. I'm your child. Get me out of this. I don't pray quite as poetically as David did. Oh, that's, that's beautiful in your heavy moment to still be a poet. Oh, that I had wings. Some people just got it, you know. I mean, even in the stress, in the terror, in the horrors, he's writing these beautiful, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I'm more like, get me out of here. Come on, dude, fix it. Y'all might be the poet type. I'm not saying. But David said it so beautifully. 
how it flies. He, he, he didn't just put a lot in the two verses of what was going on. He put a lot in what he would do. I'd fly away. I'd hang out in the wilderness. I'd just get anywhere else but here. I would do it quick. But I want to present something for a few minutes tonight. A different approach. And I still please understand. I pray if it's possible first. And I ask him and sometimes tell him. And I try to remember what he's God. Don't, don't tell him. You ask him. I ask for deliverance first often. But if there's times, if there's moments, if there's circumstances where he doesn't answer those initial prayers, then I've learned don't just wish for wings to get away. At some point, it's time to say, okay, God, if you've allowed this moment and if you've allowed this place in time or if you've allowed me to be here and you're not going to deliver me and you're not going to fix it right now, then you must have a purpose and we're about to watch you work in the middle of some challenges. Amen. I would love to have some wings and fly away. But let's also strive to have a greater desire to trust Jesus and walk with him no matter where that leads. Hear me. Deliverance is awesome. Getting away is great. But, oh, somebody hear me. I'm going to preach for a little while tonight if that's okay. Getting away, being delivered is great. But coming out of the other side of something and realizing that Jesus walked with you through it and you've made it and now you're stronger and you're better and you have more capacity to love and you have more capacity to care and you have more capacity to reach and serve and minister for others is just as great. we say that again in, in another way. A deliverance testimony is awesome. But a I made it through testimony is just as awesome. Amen. I went through it. Hell thought he had me. Hell thought he had my family. Hell thought we were going under. Amen. I cried out to God, but he didn't fix it. But we kept on keeping on. We kept on trusting Jesus. We kept on calling on the name of the Lord. That testimony when God, oh, I've got them. God delivered me from something. But I believe that when God delivers us through some things, it's just as beautiful. I want us to look at that word through for just a little while tonight. The word through, if you looked it up in the dictionary, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, or T-H-R-U if you're texting somebody and taking a shortcut. <laughs> through has two meanings. As an adjective, it means finished or done. You're through. I don't like that. As a preposition, Oh, I love this one. As a preposition, the word through means moving in one side and out of the other. Sometimes the dictionary is so cool in what it doesn't say. It doesn't say in what or out of what. It just left that wide open. But the word through means moving in, in one side of something but through means coming out the other. Oh, so there's two definitions, through, done, finished, or moving in one side of a thing. We'll get back to that in a minute. And coming out of the other. So now, could you please put Isaiah. Oh, I love this verse. And 
We do in Pentecost. We sing about it. We rejoice over this verse. Could you put Isaiah 43 verse 2 on the screen for us tonight? Amen. Somebody, somebody just say it with me. I'm not going to take off singing, I promise. Amen. If I need to sing too bad, I'll get Sister Megan back up here or whatever. We'll, we'll sing. I'll let y'all sing. Amen. But I remember that old Pentecostal song that said, I'm going through. I'm going through. Hey, Amen. I don't that means I'm going in I'm going in one side of some things, but keep on keeping on believing in my Jesus. I'm going to come out the other side of some things. Somebody say the preacher's preaching wishing for wings. I'm preaching wishing for wings, but you know what? I probably should have titled this message Stop wishing for wings. It's okay to ask, but let's don't spend our whole life saying, oh, God, if you just get me out of here, oh, God, if you just get me, oh, God. Every once in a while, he said, I'm wanting to show you my power right in the middle of some stuff that was big enough to take you down, but it didn't get you. So, so look at this verse with me. The word through is in this verse three times. I don't think one of them means you're done. No, no, it's that other definition. When thou passest, somebody help the preacher out. When thou passest through the waters, I, God, will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Through the waters, through the rivers, through the fire. There are times, there are times that I wish I could sing. I can't. I have an issue with preachers that can preach beautifully and sing beautifully the same dude. That's not fair. It's not fair to be able to be preaching and then sing your own altar call, just slip right into some. That's not fair. I can't do that. But honey, every once in a while there's a song that makes me wish I could sing. And if I could sing, I would sing Through the Fire by the Crab Family about every Sunday night. Y'all hear me? It might be 20 years old, but every time I hear the word so many times, I question certain circumstances and things I cannot understand. Many times in trials, my weakness blurs my vision, and that's when my frustration gets out of hand. It's then, amen, when in my trials, when in my struggles, it's then that I am reminded I've never been full. I feel the Holy Ghost help in the house. I've never been forsaken. I've never had to stand one test alone. And as I look at all the victories, the spirit rises up inside of me and it's through the fire. Come on, somebody. It's through the fire. My weakness is made he never promised that the cross would not get heavy. He never said the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting. But he said help, help, help would always come in time. Remember, oh, remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says, give in. Just hold on. And the Lord will show up. And this next word is written in the lyrics, so I got to say it. He said, just hold on. Our Lord will show up. Yeah. It's probably cooler when you're singing it, right? <laughs> and he will take you through. So I say it with me. Through. Through the fire. Again. He goes on to say, I know within myself I would surely perish, but if I trust the hand of God, he'll shield the flame again. Just hold on. Our God will show up, yeah, and he will take you through the fire again. He never promised 
the cross, just leave that verse there for a minute. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy. He never offered victory without fighting. He never said that he would remove every flood. He did not say, I'm going to remove every flood. He did not, you do not find it in his word, say that he would take away every fiery trial. He did not say that. He didn't say that he would deliver you from every shadow of death, from every river of opposition, from the flood waters of intimidation and despair. He did did not say that he would deliver you from every one, but he did say that when we face those, honey, you've got a direct word from the throne room that when you're in that circumstance, when you're in that situation, you have a word from God that he said, honey, if you live in for me and you go through a storm you ain't gonna be in it by yourself I'm gonna be with you and you are going when thou passest through somebody hear me somebody say I'm going through when thou passest through the waters when thou passest through the rivers amen it's my nature to say just give me some wings oh get me out of here I'm ready to go right now but God if that's not your plan and I got to go through this situation or through this storm or trial, then in the name of Jesus, here I come. Me and Jesus are going to go through. Through. Somebody say it with me. Through. Through. He, he, he said he would lead us through. Let me show you another verse. Let's move to Psalm chapter 23, verse 4. The psalmist David must have felt some of the same thing, had an understanding of what was spoken by prophet Isaiah because David said in that beautiful Psalm 23, Yea, though I, somebody help me, walk through the valley, the shadow of death, Some versions read the valley of darkness, deep darkness. One of them says, yea, though I walk through the valley of deep darkness. Notice what he said, through. He didn't say, I'm going to stop and build a house there. He didn't say, I'm going to go to the post office and tell him, this is my permanent address here. I know I've moved a few times, but y'all, this, is, this one's going to be settled. He, he didn't say that. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid, for thou art with me. I stand before you and preach on this Sunday night. If God delivered you from every valley, from every river and flood, and from every fiery trial. And I have a question that I'd like for you to consider with me tonight. If he delivered you from every single one of them, how could he ever show you and prove to you that he will walk with you through them? If he delivered you from every single one, then we got to yank those two verses out the Bible because if he delivered you from every single one, then you're never going to have one to go through. Amen. But he, he's not going to deliver us. And please don't, don't, don't anybody get scared. Oh, Lord, if I live for Jesus, I guess bad stuff's going to come just so I can get me a new testimony. No, that ain't how it rolls. But if you live for God long enough, you're going to understand God's not just going to move every single tough thing out the way. He's not going to just bounce every trial or storm or battle out of the way. If he delivered you from everyone, then how could he ever show you that he will walk with you through them? Amen. I've got a word for somebody on this Sunday night. You aren't through. You're going through. Somebody hear me. You aren't done. 
you aren't finished. It's not over. You aren't through. You're going through. You may have been wishing for wings, but you're realizing, wait a minute. God's going to put an anointing on me. God's going to put something in my home and my family. I'm not through. I'm going through. I came in one side, but I'm going to come out the other. Amen. I came in one side of this circumstance, but I'm not stopping. I'm going through. Oh, God, our God, our God is, is so, so very good. Now, I would like to take just a few moments. We just looked at Isaiah 43, 2. In Psalms 23, 4, we looked at both of those settings emphasizing the word through. I'd like to go back, if we can do this, one more time, and I want us to emphasize another point that's in both of those verses. Psalms 23, verse 4. We just looked at it. We emphasized the word through. So I know I may be messing up with their order. There it is. Look what else is in this verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for, here's why I don't have to be afraid. Here's why fear is not going to dominate or win. It may bump against me, but it's not going to win. When I walk through the valley of deep despair, through, everybody say through. I'm going in one side and out the other. I'm not going to live in fear for thou art with me. Can we switch over to that Isaiah 43 verse? We Y'all sing about it. I mean, uh, there, there's songs that go straight from this verse. I, I looked it up just before church. It was one we sang a lot over the last few years. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way. So I am not afraid when I'm in the fire. I will not feel the flame. I'll stand before the giant declaring victory. My God will make a way. So I, see there was the old crab version. There's the new worship version. We're all saying the same thing. Listen to what the psalmist and what also was said in Isaiah. The psalmist said, I'm, I'm not be afraid for thou art with me. When thou passest through the waters, can anybody help? God's speaking through the prophet. When, can I, I'm not trying to cuss. That's a good setup for the next line, right? <laughs> when you're going, let me just, I'll, I'll say it nicely. When you're going through a situation where all hell's broke loose. When something hits your home or your family or your life that's overwhelming. When you're going through it, your God said, not only through, 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 three times in the same verse. Look what else he said. I will be with you. I don't know if you've ever considered this. If I stood in this pulpit tonight and said, tonight, I want to announce that God, our Jesus, is going through a trial tonight. I just have to come tell this congregation tonight, God is in one of the lowest valleys he's ever been in. Y'all would probably go, oh, but not God, he's on the throne. But I believe I have scriptural proof to tell you. My God, tonight, is in a valley. My God tonight is in a storm. My God tonight is walking through some circumstances that involve tremendous pain. My God is walking through some fiery, fiery trials tonight. Why? Because he's got people all over the planet. And if one of his children is in a valley, guess where he's at tonight? He's in a valley. Because in the moment, oh, somebody here, in the moment... In the moment where hell is telling you you're all by yourself, where's God now? Honey, he ain't left you. He hadn't forsaken you because in your darkest moment, he said, I'm with you. In your toughest moment, he said, I'm with you. In the moment, in the, in the places where it seemed there's no way out, God said, I am with you. Now, with. We, we define through. With means 
accompanied by a person or a thing. So anything that you're going through and you're serving the Lord, he's, he's accompanying you. If you look up that word accompany, it means with someone as a companion or as an escort. So when I see that, I see that as six foot five, beefed up, bowed up, powerful with any weapon, security detail. That's what Jesus is for me going through the valley. That's what Jesus, that's what he is for me going through a trial. It's like, I, I may have to go through some things, but there's my, I can't see him all the time, but here's my Jesus right here saying, I got you, I got you, buddy, it's all right. Come on, come on, we're going to make it. And, and whatever hell thinks is going to destroy me, my Jesus is accompanying me. He is escorting me. He is going before me in that valley. He's going before you in that trial. He's going before you in that circumstance. I hasten. I can't say yet that I'm hastening to a close. I'm just getting closer. <laughs> Ministry is going to unfold in this room in the next few minutes. I'm going to preach just a few more moments. But there's a ministering spirit. Again, it's been here all day long. Somebody hear me tonight. He's closer to you than you even think he is. He's nearer you than you even know he is. You say, Brother Greg, how can you say that? Well, number one, I've walked in a few places where in the moment you say, God, and then you look back and realize, oh, my goodness, he was closer than I ever thought. He was nearer than I even realized in the moment. He was working. He was leading. He was guiding I take you, and I didn't give these scriptures to the media, but maybe they can find them. But I take you to the two men. We call them the two men on the road to Emmaus. Jesus has been crucified. He's buried. And they don't know Jesus has been resurrected. They're walking along the road, and Jesus joins them. It's in Luke 24, verse 15 and 16 is where it says they're walking along. And then Jesus draws near. But the Bible said their eyes were holding that they did not know him. Jesus did that a few times in the New Testament. I don't know if he made the noise, but in my mind, he always made a little, like a little noise, and he blinded their eyes to knowing it was him. The Bible says it. Their eyes, their eyes, they were walking with him, but they didn't know it was him. They, they walk and they talk and they commune. They invite him into their home. And then Jesus says, it's me. And they realize it's Jesus. And then he disappears through the walls. Because, see, that was before emails, text messages, all that. He had to go keep letting people know he was resurrected. But he let them know and he went somewhere else. But look what happens in verse 30 of Luke 24. He sit at meat with them. He took the bread, blessed it, break it. Their eyes were open. They knew him. He vanished. Verse 32, they said, didn't our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and opened up to us the scriptures? Folks, Jesus walked with them and talked with them on the journey, and they didn't know it was him. And then when he revealed himself, they said, oh, I knew, I knew, I knew I felt, I knew something. And, and they realized in the moments that we didn't even know it was him. And we didn't even know he was with us. He was with us the entire time. And I'm speaking to somebody in this room today. I got to tell you, you're not alone. I got to tell you, in whatever you're walking through and whatever you're facing and whatever is part of your journey. You're not alone. He's with you. You say, well, Brother Greg, I can't see it fully right now. I can't feel it fully right now. You keep on trusting. You keep on believing because there come a moment where you'll say, oh, he was with me all the time. He was with me all the time. Hallelujah. I just want to take a pause. I got 
one more verse I'd like to share, one more scripture setting. and I've got a story or two that God has put on my heart, but I want to follow the Holy Ghost clearly here at this point in the message. Can we just close our eyes and lift our hands and hearts to the Lord right now? God, you've ministered. Holy Ghost, beautiful, all service, all day. We honor you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We exalt you right now, Jesus. Our nature is to wish for wings, to get away, to escape, to have the deliverance, that the healing happen right now. Sometimes you have a different plan, and we trust you in that journey, and we get to watch you work in amazing, amazing ways, showing how real you are. Hallelujah. Somebody say it with me. God is with me. I don't know all your journeys, but I can just tell you, God is with you. Amen. I know we close our eyes. Can we just keep our eyes closed and lift our hands to the Lord for a moment right now? Thank you, dear Jesus. 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 Somebody say it with me, through the fire. We saw that in Isaiah chapter 43, when thou walkest through the fire. Most of our minds would probably go to the story of the three Hebrew children, right? I want you all to see something so beautiful. Not going to tell the whole story. I'm just going to jump. And again, I didn't give you all these verses, but Daniel chapter 3, verse 23. Three young men were bound, cast into the fiery furnace because they wouldn't bow down to an idol. They fell down, they've been bound into the middle of the burning, fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar, the next verse, was astonished, rose up, said to his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the fire? And the counselor said, true, O king, it's true. You cast three men bound. Two, two things we notice here. They're counting it's three and their condition, they're bound. And he said, lo, please notice the math and the condition. I see four men loose. The numbers changed, and their condition changed. He said, we, we, there's three that we put in this circumstance bound. Now there's four that is loose. Now I want if you can, jump with me to Revelations chapter 1, verse 13, 14. This is a long jump from the book of Daniel to the book of Revelation. But when John is seeing his vision of God in heaven, in the midst of the candlesticks, he said, I see one like the Son of Man. He's clothed with a garment down to his foot. He has a golden girdle, a golden belt on, if you please. His head and his hairs are white like wool, and his is white as snow. His eyes are as a flame of fire. But notice what John saw next when he saw God in heaven. Can somebody notice with me the next verse? His feet. His feet were like unto fine brass as if they burned 
in a furnace. Why? When he's seeing. This is in the book of Revelation. He said, ah, oh, eyes like fire, white hair, oh, and his feet look like they burn in a furnace. And I would say, because they did. Because when he stood beside those three Hebrew children, they weren't alone. When he stood beside those three Hebrew children, he said, Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw them in the fire, but you can't stop me from joining them in the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw the heat of everything you got against them, but I'm going to take the heat. I'm going to take the pressure. I'm going to take it for them. I'm going to do it for you. Hallelujah. So I tell you, I, I believe when I get to heaven, there's going to be some scars on his feet because he stood with me in some trials and he stood with me in some heaviness and he stood with you in some tough, tough places in your journey. Would you stand with me right now? God, is going to show his power to many of you in beautiful, beautiful ways. Because he's going to put an anointing on you that's going to let you know you don't have to give up. You don't have to back down. And you don't have to quit. You are going. Somebody say through. And God is with me. Somebody say it with me. God is with me. Three in the fire didn't stay three long. Bound in the fire didn't stay bound long. Jesus showed up and brought his delivering power. I believe Pastor Martin had us do this this morning, but I, something that I love to do. Would you reach over and take the hand of that family member or friend? Loved one that's sitting beside you. If you buy sitting by a guest, just ask them if it's okay if you take their hand. Put your hand on their shoulder if you're comfortable doing that. And would you take that hand right now and just lift it to the heavens all across this room? I know it's our human nature to wish for wings. It's our human nature to get relief right now. It's our human nature for God, want God to fix it, fix it right now. Jesus even said, if it's possible, if there's any other way. But I speak to somebody tonight, your testimony is going to be powerful because God's showing you, I carried you through it. What you thought would drown you, what you thought would overwhelm you, I brought you through it. And you come out the other side, amen, with a powerful testimony. You came out the other side stronger. Hey, I'm speaking to some people in this room. You're stronger than you even think you are. You have more Holy Ghost than you even think you have. You, even have, you have more God on you than you even know. Brother Greg, I feel by myself. You're not by yourself. Oh, did not our hearts burn within us. Amen. You just pray it in your own way right now. God, it's my nature to wish for wings. But whatever I've been going through right now, I pray an anointing. I pray the power from heaven. I pray grace from the throne room. There's some giants in this room right now. There's some giants in this room. Hell thought, I'll throw the book at them. I'll take them out. And you're still here. Hell didn't destroy your family. He didn't break. No, 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 no. He, you're coming through. I love the deliverance testimonies, but I also love the testimony. They went through the fire. They went through the flood, but the fire couldn't, couldn't burn them. The flood couldn't drown them. Because they had a tenacity. They had an anointing on them. Take that hand you're holding. Just there's a there's a pure ministry flow in this room right now. There's some families may have been through something, and you're still here. And hell's like, yeah, you just might as well. No, I'm not giving up. 
I'm going through. I came in one side. I'm going to come out the other. And I'm going to come out with more anointing. I'm going to come out with power from the throne room. I'm going to come out with grace from above. Uh, I see some mamas crying out in the Holy Ghost right now. I see some families, some dear precious men lifting up their hearts to God. Brother Greg, I feel like I'm in, my, in this fire by myself. No, you ain't. No, you're not. So we saw three and this was their condition. Oh, wait, look again. There's one more in that fire. And they're not bound. They're being delivered by the power of God. They're being delivered by the power of God. I, t- I tell you what I tell you what I feel and man the Holy Ghost you just learn to follow the Holy Ghost amen people I believe this week people's going to get the Holy Ghost God's going to move and bless and move in different ways and that can happen tonight but I'd like to happen for the next few moments it's just already here Let's come and stand close as family. We're, we're already family. And if you're a first-time guest, you're family, you're part of us. Amen. This is your home church. You're, you're part of us. Amen. I'd like for you to just come and stand. Just come close. There's an anointing here. I see precious, amen, ladies, men, young adults, the tears flowing down your cheeks right now. We're going we're gonna to let a ministry spirit of the Lord just flow in this house for a few minutes. Just come. And when I say come and stand close, just don't leave big gaps. Just get close where others can come behind you. Come close where you can connect with someone. If you need the Holy Ghost, you come stand. But just bring your life, bring your family, bring your marriage, bring your home, bring your circumstance. Ah, in the name of Jesus. 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 Now, would you do what we just did back in our pews? Would you mind doing that again? You may be standing by a different person, but would you connect again? Put a hand on a shoulder or take them by the hand. And I'm going to release right now the body to minister to the body because some of you know better than me. You know some that just may need a hand on their shoulder or may need somebody praying for them in the Holy Ghost tonight. I don't know who it is the devil would say you're through you're done it's over and you Holy Ghost look that devil in the eye said I'm not through I'm going through I'm in no way done I'm in no way finished the God that brought me in is the God that's going to bring me out Hey man, the God that started me on this journey is the God that's going to carry me through this job. That's it. There's something in the Holy Ghost in this room right now. You cut a bahaya. Brother, let those holy tears flow right now. Let those holy tears flow right now. There's an anointing right over. Yes, my brother, let those holy tears flow right now. Brother Greg, it's so easy to wish for wings. That's not a sin. It's not wrong. But sometimes we just got to realize God's not going to deliver us out of it. He's going to show us his power and carry us through it. Hey, uh, that's it. If you're standing next to, beside, or in front of somebody and you want to turn and put a hand on another shoulder, it's okay. 
If you want to take a hand and lift it to the heavens, you're not through, you're going through. Amen. Your God is with you. He's with you in that flood, in that fire, in that trial, in that difficulty. He's with you. Church, I release you right now. If you feel to minister to someone near you, there's a ministry flow in this room. Yeah. 